Croatia. Having over 1,000 islands, is regarded by many as one of the best places on earth for sailing. Exploring Croatia in the winter means tranquil solitude on the water, but that comes at a cost of extreme winter weather. In this episode, together, we will brave over 60 nautical miles across the eternally transient Adriatic Sea. We're anchored just off of Dugi Otok. It's an island in Croatia. We're anchored just outside of the small village of Luka. This is our second day here. Uh, we're in the middle of a storm. There hasn't been really much rain at all, but the wind has been hitting up like 30, 32 knots coming from the south. Pretty intense, so we're just sitting here on anchor. It's been a nice anchor, all things considered. We're nice and protected in this bay, so we're not getting hit with any waves. We're just getting blown around a lot. It's kind of like being in like a log cabin in the woods during a snowstorm. You just hang out inside, crank up the fire, and we're now close to 96 hours since we've touched land. After two days on anchor here, weathering the storm, the weather has cleared up. The wind is now coming out of the opposite direction. It's coming out of the north and we're going to head out of here, sail through the national park, and then go find an anchorage because it looks like this evening and tomorrow we'll have heavy weather again, but it looks like we should be clear for the day. We are headed through this channel into Kornadi National Park. Except for a couple local fishing skiffs, we were the only humans for miles. We marveled as we peacefully sailed through this natural wonder. Kornadi's park boundaries stretch near 19 nautical miles, enclosing 89 islands. The Kornadi Archipelago is the densest group of islands in the whole of the Mediterranean. We set the main and headed east-northeast towards our next anchorage, just off the island of Pashman. is coming. We have about two miles. We might get wet. On arrival we found some open moorings which we gladly tied off to. <clears throat> the sound went dead on this clip so let me explain what I'm explaining. We dropped the sails and we turned on the engine to motor into the bay. The wind picked up to over 20 knots and it began to rain. As we were headed full bore into the bay, I found the throttle was more attached to my hand than it was the throttle. The screw that held it in place had sheared. Thinking and moving fast, we were able to wedge a screw into the shaft. Now we don't have another exact screw, so we have a temporary fix that works, although the throttle has some wiggle room.
Heavy weather sailing, no doubt about that. We did 19.9 nautical miles in three hours and 45 minutes. This first experience with that much wind. In Croatia, you have short fetch, so the waves don't have a long distance to develop, so you get these steep waves that are really close together, so you would get, just get tossed around a lot. That was intense. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got it? Awesome. We just went through a really intense windy storm. It was probably about 35 knots and just super wavy. You got splashed in the face a bunch of times and I think we were the only sailboat out there. It was absolutely incredible. Just such a fun ride. A good day. We're all dry. We kept dry with our heavy weather gear. So now the only thing left to do is to start a fire. That one's a little green. <laughs> Ta -da! It's about 9.37. Last night we anchored off of the island of Capergé. We are sailing to Shibanek today, and that is an inlet. It's like a, kind of like a lake almost, and then we'll be anchoring in fresh water in a freshwater lake. It's a 15 mile sail. Should take three hours. Wind is blowing about 10 to 15 knots out of the northeast, so we'll have to beat wind. that one tack that we already did. We'll take this pretty much all the way, less than a mile, to the entrance of Sheevnik, and then from there we'll drop the sails and motor. After eight days on Ariane Rod, we were elated to see the city of Sheepnik. As you're making way into Sheepnik, you can see a few of these tunnels, which were built by the Yugoslav army. This one specifically is referred to as Hitler's Eye. We are in Sheep Neck. Just got fuel somewhere around 400, 415 dollars. But we're full on diesel, full on petrol. We're gonna move the boat back, leave the boat, go do some laundry, get some food, provision. As soon as we start going up here, we should hit fresh water. And so then we'll be boating in fresh water, which will be an absolute first for Audion Run, I think. I don't think, I don't know if Andre's been here. Not sure. I don't know. Oh, good day. Oh, <laughs> Thank you for watching and subscribe to join us next time as we make our way through the fresh water up to the quaint town of Scrotton. Big love. <laughs> <laughs>